Okay. Lots of people ask me about uh, what greens to mix or what greens to use or how to mix greens. So I've always promised that I would do something along those lines and since I have new lighting to test out, I'm going to give that a try. This is my uh, biggest palette and I'm using it because I will be able to show you lots of different choices, but I don't necessarily ever use this many. And in order to refresh my paints, I just hit them with my little sprayer that I bought in the travel section of uh, my discount store. And let me see if I can allow you to see this and still get everything on the page. Alrighty, now the obvious things, of course, are yellow. This is a cadmium yellow light, I believe. And let's go for um, Prussian blue. And a cat hair would be good. See, that makes quite an intense green. And you can vary it towards blue-green by adding more of the blue, or more towards chartreuse by adding more yellow, or make it quite intense. Let's not mess up my yellow too quickly. By adding a stronger mix. So just that alone is very um, uh, versatile. And I should have thought to get a paper towel first, so rip, sorry. Just for this, I'm going to try to keep my palette kind of clean so you can actually see decent clean mixtures. That'd be cool. A different uh, yellow is cadmium yellow medium. And again, let's mix it with the phthalo. And as you can see, that makes a different kind of green. You can mix on the paper or on your palette for interesting effects. But did you know that you can make greens with oranges as well? Let's try that. completely different kind of green. It's a, a much more olive color. Much more subtle. Because there's some red in the orange, of course. Just so we remember what we're doing, let's put little dots of the pure color up here. They low and they low. Oops, you can tell I still had a little green in my yellow, but that's okay. Happens to the best of us. And I'm sure not the best of us. Um, another possibility for a more subtle green is uh, using the more subtle yellows. This is raw sienna. Why don't I make the dot beforehand? What a good idea. And thalo. And then mix the two for a subtle soft green. A little more of the raw sienna there. Hmm. And rather a bunch more of the Thalo green, thalo blue, oops. That gives you a wonderful, uh, more subtle effect. And I also have, uh, you could use raw sienna or uh, yellow ochre for that. Um, another wild choice is quinacridone gold which is similar to raw sienna, but more intense. And again, the phthalo blue. 
Oops, forgot to clean my palette this time. And I don't always do this, I'm just doing it so you can actually see colors that are more pure. Now there is a green. That is strong, isn't it? Again, a little bit more of the phthalo blue makes a really dark spruce green. And more of the Quinn Gold makes a really nice warm glowing green. And of course you can dilute any of these to be lighter just by adding extra water. Now those are more or less your expected greens. Um, Thalo Blue has a lot of green in it, even the red shades, so that you get more of um, a pure green, a greeny green. So we shall try some other options. This is Cobalt Blue. Oops, a big blob of Cobalt Blue. And Cad Yellow Medium. So, more of an English green, I think, more subtle. And let's add a little bit more of the yellow. See, very different from these greens, but still very useful. This is ultramarine blue. And this time let's use the Cad Yellow Light. Doggone it, there's still some green in there. Oh well. So shoot me. It is very hard to keep your yellows clean. If you're a messy girl like I am anyway. But again, a lovely variation. Perhaps more deserty colors with the, the gray or blue. Okay, I've about run out of room, but I have not run out of yellows and blues, so I'll let this dry and come back to it in a few minutes. Now that these have had a chance to dry, I have labeled them and added just a little bit more information. And as Joseph pointed out, up here I was calling this Prussian blue, and every place else I called it Thalo blue. And there is a reason for that. They're very, very similar, and so I kind of use them interchangeably. Uh, there are several other blues that are very similar, so if you have Prussian blue, Antwerp blue, um, Thalo blue, don't worry about it. Use what you have. And you may be able to see oops, um, the raw sienna was a little bit pale and it doesn't have to be. I wanted to show you that by adding uh, more color you get a stronger green or a, a, a darker value. So that's always an option as well. It, it strictly depends on how strong your mix is. Now then, we'll try another couple of uh, uh, blues and show you that although these are the typical and most often used, well except for the cadmium orange, um, you are able to use all sorts of things to make some wonderful greens. So what did I have in mind for branching out? I'll show you. Oops. I felt like knocking things on the floor. You could hear that. Okay. Now on this side of my palette I have uh, indigo. Cerulean, which is a much weaker color. <laughs> Come on, Cerulean! have to really kind of scrub it up a bit, but it does um, granulate nicely, which I love. 
This is phthalo green, so we'll just be skipping it. It's already a screaming green, as you can see. This is manganese blue hue. You can no longer get straight manganese because it is uh, apparently dangerous to mine. And you know what? I'm not at all sure that this isn't cerulean, and this is manganese blue hue. Oh well. I think that's the case, so sorry. And this will surprise you. This is Payne's Gray, which doesn't look like it would make any kind of a green at all, but bear with me and we'll play a little bit. Uh, where can I put this so you can see? Pretty much like that, I guess. Okay. Um, starting with the indigo. Let's move that so you can see a little bit better. Let's go conventional and mix it with cadmium yellow medium. And I don't know what will happen if we mix it with orange. Let's see. Hmm, kind of an interesting gray color. Gray green ish. Remembering my dots now so I can remember what I did. Uh, a little bit more pure indigo here. And let's try raw sienna with that. Oops, let's try the raw sienna first. Again, a subtle color. And, hmm, okay. The stronger Quinn Gold with indigo is going to give you a stronger, darker green. Cool, huh? Now here's something you probably wouldn't think of, and I'm just going to throw it over here to the side. This is something I use quite often. This is back to my Thalo Blue, which is a very strong, intense blue. And I'll just stick it over here in the corner. Let's make it good and strong. And in order to make a wonderful um, dark evergreen green, I often mix burnt sienna and phthalo. Is that cool or what? Look how dark that is. And you can just keep adding blue, a little more green to make it richer and darker. It's very, very versatile. And of course you can lighten it up for a lighter grayer green. And let me put my reminder spot down here so I don't forget what I've done. Okay, back to these guys then. But first, I need to clean off the palette again. Oh, there's room. Oops, I'm dribbling. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time or the last. Okay. And I believe this is manganese. And again, it does need some stirring and lifting. And let's see, what do I do? What do I do? Manganese and cad. Doggone it. I still have so much green in that yellow. We'll just clean that up. This is going to make a very light spring green. Oops. You can make it somewhat stronger. And of course you can make it bluer. Or yellower, if you wish. Whichever. Um, I'm not going to try that one with orange because I think that would just turn into mud, but uh, let's do it with the burnt sienna, or sorry, raw sienna. 
and see what we get. I think it's going to be pretty. Yep, it is. A little bit more of the manganese blue. A little bit more of the raw sienna. Oh, that's very versatile. And it will uh, granulate in interesting ways. But let's try the Quinn Gold while we're in the neighborhood. There's our bright Quinn, bright transparent Quinn. Oops, almost got in the wrong blue. Oh, yeah. That's just a very interesting color. Let's add some more of the gold. Yep, I can see lots of uses for that. Now then, wipe the palette again. And come in with the cerulean. Yep, I'm sure that's cerulean. And this time let's use cad yellow medium, which I still have green in my brush. Sorry. My paint water is getting kind of funky over here. Well, that's a very springy green. A little bit more blue darkens it down. Let's try yellow ochre. Oops, you can't see what I'm mixing, can you? I can just barely see the screen on my camera here. And it's gotten a little bit dry and needs some scrubbing. I should have refreshed it with water before starting, but I didn't. This is going to make a very subtle grayed green. Desert-like, think sage perhaps. More blue. Distant hills, maybe. More green. Or yellow. Oh yeah, that would be very handy. And once again, let's use that strong Quinn Gold. With Cerulean. Can you see that? More blue. More Quingo. Woo. Look how different it is, each one of these. And if you need to figure out which green uh, you want to use, I would definitely recommend making yourself a chart like this and label the colors so you remember what they are. And um, then you'll have a better idea what to grab for. Now then, I told you I was going to use Payne's Gray, didn't I? So here we go. This is a Winsor Newton Payne's Gray. I prefer their um, clearer color. I use their Indigo too. I just like the, the less muddy Color. Oops, I'm getting a lot of glare on my palette, aren't I? Okay, let's... Oops, I forgot to make my color dot. So we can remember what I'm doing. Apparently I can't remember what I'm doing. <laughs> okay, indigo and... Add yellow medium. It makes a darker, uh, more opaque color. Very grayed, naturally, being Payne's Gray. Oh, I dribbled. Oh, well. Won't be the first or the last time. <sighs> so, again, let's try. That's just not wanting to mix. Let's use, uh, 
the raw sienna instead. And I think I had those mixed up a while ago too, so excuse me. And whoops, I need to clean that off so you can actually see. This is a very great green. Nice for desert stuff though. It could be very useful. Cool it with a bit more of the Payne's Gray or warm it with a little bit more of the Raw Umber. And again, let's come back and try that Quinn Gold. I'm splashing all over here. Quinn Gold and Payne's Gray. Again, a nice evergreen color. More Payne's Gray. Oops, a little bit too much Payne's Gray. Very rich and dark. More Quinn Gold. And that's a nice useful color as well. So, I will be labeling all of these so I can remember what on earth I was doing. And I recommend that you do the same. Now then, do I think it's necessary to have a palette like this with all of these choices? Or even more choices? Not actually, I don't. Um, sometimes I like to exercise just by using the um, primaries, the very basic primaries, a cool red, um, a rather true blue, in this case a thalo, and a yellow. This may be a Hansa yellow medium, actually. And I often throw in a couple of convenience colors, burnt sienna and indigo, or maybe that's Payne's gray, I can't remember. Yep, that's Payne's gray, okay. But this is my little Altoids box that I made myself with all sorts of little goodies in it. A pen and a cut-off colored pencil and a graphite pencil, a bit of eraser, um, a sharpener, and somewhere, oh I think I dropped it on the floor, is a little folding water brush. And there's a chunk of uh, white wax pencil in here. And a cut off drinking straw that I usually use to extend my tools to a more comfortable working length. But anyway, that's not what we're talking about today, is it? We're talking about making greens. So. Here we go, refreshing the palette once again. And that nice bright yellow. Thalo. And let's mix them up. As always, you can mix on the paper or on your palette, whatever you want, to get a nice variety. And I just sullied my yellow again. Well, that's not the first time either. And if you don't care for quite that strong or pure a color, as this green, you can add just a touch of red to gray it down a little to make it more subtle. If you prefer, you can make your regular green. Oops, that is not exactly regular, is it? It's sort of irregular. And add a little burnt sienna again to gray it and make it more subtle. Burnt sienna actually has um, pretty much all the, all the primaries in it, but already mixed. It's what I call a convenience color. So, mm, let's uh, add my dot so I remember what I've done. It's quite possible that I don't. So you see, well, let's try this one more time. Let's do one more. 
since we happen to have Payne's Gray with us. Oops. I hear tell people don't mind that I go oops all the time, so I hope that is still true. Patience, patience. Here's my strong screaming green with just a little Payne's Gray in it. See, that makes a darker oops. <laughs> oops again, huh? A darker, richer, more subtle green. So you can do pretty much whatever you want, no matter what your uh, challenge color is, and for many of us it is green. You can do the same kind of exercise. Mix yourself oranges or reds or browns. And yes, you can mix a brown. Let me clean this off for you and show you. It is more tedious. This is why I like to keep a convenience color brown handy. Because this takes a little... Ooh, doesn't this make a lovely lavender? Mmm, -hmm, yum. But let's brown that down by adding some yellow. Warm it up by adding some red. Make more of a, a yellow ochre raw umber by adding a yellow. And you can make that quite strong if you wish. I'm going to get my colors all gunky here on my palette, but again, it will not be the first time. Or the last. You can just about mix a black if you just keep at this. Theoretically you can, but it's... Yeah, well, that's pretty close, isn't it? It is slower than just lifting up some uh, Payne's Gray and going with that, but as you can see, it's quite subtle and it may um, separate out into interesting colors. You can see the little red edge here. So uh, if you don't want to have black in your palette, and I virtually never do, mix it up. It's fun. <laughs>